this is Katie with Limitless You Health Coaching, your custom approach to weight loss. And today we're talking about why that scale just won't budge. And I've done a Q&A Tuesday about why the scale doesn't really matter. But for those of you who really rely on that scale, um, it's really frustrating when you see that that number isn't changing. And you might think that you're doing everything right, but there could be a few things that maybe you haven't thought about that are getting in the way of you actually reaching your weight loss goals or seeing that number change on the actual scale itself. And the first one is that a lot of people think that exercise is how you are, that's like the only way to losing weight and that you can eat whatever you want as long as you're exercising or as long as you're burning more calories um, than you ate. But not all calories are created equal and you really cannot out-exercise a bad diet. So especially around the holidays, you know, just because you're going to the gym, you still can't overdo it on eggnog and cookies and, um, and all those treats. Yes, you can have some of those, but you can't just overdo it and say, oh, but I'm going to the gym tomorrow. Yes, there is some truth to the calories in and calories out, but more importantly is you can't, act, you can't exercise away the hormonal response that you have when you eat food or well, junk food. And so when you eat something really sugary, so let's say a gingerbread cookie or a glass of eggnog, when it goes into your body, all that sugar is too much for your body to handle, so it gets shot right over to your liver. Your liver cannot handle all that sugar either. So your pancreas, being the BFF that it is, says, I've got you, let me help you out, and starts shooting out insulin. And insulin is your body's fat storage hormone. So hormonally, when you eat those foods, it gets converted and stored as fat. And that's just your body being you know, extremely intelligent and just helping you out in the best way possible. So it's being stored as fat. And if that happens over and over again, it's really hard to be on the treadmill enough or be lifting enough weights um, to get rid of that fat. And you can't like undo that. You can undo the energy of the calorie in, calorie out, but what's done is done on a hormonal basis. So make sure that you're eating an 80-20 diet. 80% of the time you're eating as clean as you can, and then 20% of the time you can indulge and have a glass of wine or cookies or whatever it is that you wanna have. But just know that you cannot out exercise a bad diet. The second thing is you may be building muscle. If you really are hitting it in the gym, um, lifting weights and trying to build muscle, muscle does weigh more than fat. So the scale might just sort of be stuck um, if you are doing that kind of that kind of workout. So what I recommend you do is actually take measurements. So then you'll understand if you're losing body fat instead of just losing weight. Because what's more important than losing weight is losing fat on our body, especially around our midsection. Because all that fat, which is called visceral fat, that's around really important organs and we don't want that there. So what, I, what I've what i heard, I learned this from Dr. Oz actually, um, when I saw him speak in May, is you take your height, so I am, 5'2", which means I'm 62 inches, and then you divide it in half, so that's 31 inches, and so 31 inches is my healthy and ideal waist size. So you're gonna take a tape measure, and you're gonna go one inch under your belly button, bring it around and measure and see how close you are to reaching that goal. That's going to be um, much easier and more um, satisfying to know that you're losing fat on your body, even if the scale isn't moving. Also, start taking notes on how do your clothes feel and take pictures of yourself. Take pictures from the front and from the back and from the side so you can see the progress of your body, even if the scale isn't moving. The other thing that could be getting in the way is you're not as strict on your... Um, on your workouts and your eating as you think you might be. We tend to do this thing that when we eat something that we know we shouldn't, we kind of forget about it. Um, so I recommend that you start food journaling and do it after you eat everything. Don't wait till the end of the day because then we have food amnesia and you're like, I don't remember what I had. I think it was like oats or something. So right after you eat, pull out your journal, keep it in your bag or briefcase or whatever and jot down what you ate. Then you can look back on it. And what I like to do is if I, I go through and I highlight, okay, maybe I had some wine here or I had a cookie here. Um, then at the end of the week, I go back and I see what was highlighted and why was it highlighted? Was I not prepared enough? Was I just feeling tired? And I'm sort of emotionally eating. And then I can look back at that and say, all right, on this Tuesday, I was really busy. I was eating too much because I was stressed. 
next time, next Tuesday when I know I'm going to be this busy, I need to have a different plan of attack. And then also you might think, oh my gosh, I worked out so much this month, but maybe you really only got there like once or twice a week. So I have a little calendar and every day that I work out, I put a little note about what kind of workout I did. And then at the end of the month, I like to go back and count how many days out of the month I worked out. So you may think you're eating really clean and you're working out all the time, but this could just be, you know, because you want to be doing that, you create that in your head. So make sure that you're keeping track of what are you eating and how often are you working out. Another thing that could be stopping you from losing weight right now or for that, um, that scale to be moving is that last time you lost weight or most recently you lost a lot of weight by restricting calories um, or you did some sort of like juice cleanse or some sort of fad diet. And if you see my past video about why it's so hard to lose weight after we regain it, what I was saying in there is when we do a restrictive diet, it really flips our hormones upside down. And instead of your hormones telling you to be hungry and to be full at the right times, they go backwards. So you're always hungry and you're never full. So you end up overeating. And so what we have to do is get your hormones back in balance. And we do that by getting lots of sleep, eating our whole foods and eating frequently throughout the day just to reset your system. So you're going to have to go through that first um, to get your hormones back on, on balance because currently they may be so confused they think that you're starving because you haven't been giving them enough food so they're not going to release that fat until they feel safe again. And your body will feel safe when you start giving it food on a regular basis. So plan your meals, make sure you have um, healthy snacks with you all the time and for the next week or so try to eat every two to three hours and keep your metabolism going. And then the last one is that you may be so obsessed with that number and seeing that scale change that that could be the one thing hindering you. Um, I firmly believe that too much stress in our life causes inflammation and stress on our bodies and that causes us to hold on to weight because biologically when we felt stressed and our bodies they are so smart they knew that we were stressed because there was a famine or there was something going on and we needed extra protection. And fat is on our body for energy and for protection. And so when you feel stressed and overwhelmed and you have all this negative self-talk, why haven't you lost weight yet? I hate this part about my body. Your body is in constant stress. And especially for women, when we are stressed, our stress hormone, which is called cortisol, that gets released and guess what it does? It stores fat around our midsection. So what I encourage you to do is to first relax a little bit. The more you relax, the closer you're going to be to your goals. And then also set little tiny goals. Maybe it's I want to drink 65 ounces of water this week. Or this week I'm going to eat greens in every single meal of the day. And then once you accomplish those small little goals, you're going to feel more motivated. You're going to feel like you're end goal of losing X amount of pounds is going to be a lot closer. So get more involved in the process itself instead of just waiting for that number to come. Because the more you like just obsess about the number, the harder it becomes, the more frustrated you get. So just let go of the number and set small daily goals that you know you're going to accomplish and just know that after time with consistency, those small healthy goals that you've set for yourself, they all add up to this end goal and you will get there, but you have to relax about it first. So if you have any more tips that have worked for you that maybe the scale wasn't moving and you tried something, I would love to hear about it and share it with everybody else. But please keep sending me your questions. I'm happy to share all these tips with you. Have a great rest of your week.